Welcome to the Art Lady's Home. I want to talk to you today about upper cabinets. And the cabinets in particular I'm going to be talking to you about are the arched carved wood cabinets. And these are the inspiration and these were my um, original uh, ideas for the kitchen. I started out with my china cabinet that had some beautiful arches to them and of course the glassed in doors and I thought why can't I do some of those really cool glassed in curves to my kitchen and this is a cabinet that's similar to the china cabinet I had with the arches on the top and I brought my ideas to my brother who is the cabinet maker and here's another similar idea. And I said, wow, I'd love you to make my cabinets so they're like this, except without the panel here, I want glass here. And so he teetered back and forth with this idea. And then because of time and because of cost, I wanted my kitchen to be an inexpensive, quick, easy, no big deal remodel. And so, um, uh, you know, originally I was going to have plain solid wood doors just opened and closed. And of course, my kitchen ideas snowballed very quickly. So an option instead of having him hand, you know, carve out this shape here with his machines, he said this kind of decorative cut is, um, you know, kind of dangerous for him as he's cutting around. It's not fun. It takes a long time. And, you know, he's got to get in there with his fingers and blah, blah, blah. And so I said, well, let's make it simple then. And so we wanted to come up with an idea where we kind of got this carved, curved look with the beautiful carvings and detail, but yet it was easy for him to make and cost effective for me. So this is the idea that we came up with. We came up with creating basically a frame out of wood. And what he did was, this is a two and a half inch frame. Um, and then what he did was he ran three sides of the inside. If you look right here, you'll see this is a decorative edge. So he ran this side, this side, and this side through a decorative edge. He also ran all the outsides through a decorative edge. And this is before he actually built the, the doors. And then he just left the top part plain, okay? So inside, he did not run this top board on the inside through the decorative edge. Instead, he just left it squared off. Then he inserted this arched piece that he just cut out roughly behind into the cabinet here. Now, of course, after he ran the the top side, the side near my fingernails, through the decorative edge. He also ran this side through a planer, I think that's what it was called, to cut out the groove for the glass. And then from there, so it was basically making a frame with a very rough arch here, so that this could then become the decorative edge that actually shows. And so we put an onlay on top of that to hide that curved edge so it could be this fancy cut edge. So when you're looking at it, it looks like an arched curved cabinet. Now, what I purchased was swags that were onlays. And this is one of the swags I purchased. And it comes, so this is the way it comes. And of course, when I installed it, we installed it upside down. Now, I purchased, I found the onlays first before he actually measured and designed the cabinet. So I said, this is the one I want. And then I, and then so he had the exact dimensions of the width of this. And mine ended up being 14 inches wide. So once he had the onlays, he was then able to make the cabinets around the onlay. So that's how he actually designed it. Now, what I did was once this was placed on, I then took a scrap piece of an onlay that I had because I did a lot of decorative pieces in my kitchen. Um, and when I cut, because I, I cut some of this to custom fit things, and I had some scraps of onlays, and so I cut 
this little leaf off and I filed it down here on a, uh, it was an electric sander that he had, some kind of sander on a big belt, um, a belt sander maybe. And so I smoothed out this leaf and then we just glued it on and ran a, hit it with a nail gun. Um, so that this swag doesn't look like it's upside down. So this gives a little bit of a swag coming this way. And so that's how I designed the, um, the arches and these doors. So the doors were relatively simple because um, we didn't have to carve out all the detail and this wasn't a, a cut decorative edge. He just had done a simple curve on the inside. Um, so that's how we ended up doing the doors and the doors were basically the beginning point of my kitchen. That is what I designed everything else around. And then I came across some um, pieces, uh, decorative wood on the top that matched the carved roses. And actually this is not, um, that piece is a... It's like a foam frame, foam wood. It's not real wood. And then my crown molding is the f foam and it has the little bead work. And so that was the beginnings of my decorative kitchen. Um, and then when I designed everything else, it all blended with those roses. So all my accents and swans and corbels and things all blended in with those, the original, um, here's some more of those onlays here. You could see where I took some of the other extras. I had ordered some extras where I could cut off and cut out the leaves to make it match in there. Um, but here's some other co um, corbels and onlays that um, matched my kitchen cabinets. And then I went with an accent swan corbel. And, I'll, and all of this I talk about in other videos, but I just wanted to show you quickly what it looked like. Um, for the cabinet doors, what I did after the cabinets were in, after the doors were installed, um, I took one of the doors to a glass company and I was looking for uh, glass inserts. And what I actually did was I found, after going to several glass companies, one of my choices was this seed glass. I wanted something to look old and Victorian, nothing new, and I wanted something to give, um, to to filter the, the light and to filter what was inside the cabinets. I didn't want it to be so uh, transparent where you could see everything exactly through my doors. And so um, I went with this um, kind of a rippled effect and I found this glass at a stained glass company um, that sells gl glass for stained glass. And it is actually a tinted a very light color. I wanted it to be almost a peachy pink color um, so that I it was a hint of old, uh, maybe a light creamy color I was almost looking for. And this was a nice close color I could find. And I was really happy with this glass. And it, again, it's like a ripple glass and it has a very, very, very faint tint to it, as you can see. Let me show you on the white wall what have, what it looks like. So on the white wall, it actually looks a little bit more pinker and oranger, um, kind of an orangey peachy color than what it really is uh, because it's picking up from the cabinets in the darkness on the inside there. But I liked it because it distorted a bit of what was inside my cupboards um, so that you're not seeing as much um, as opposed to the very clear seed glass. I mean, this was second choice here for me out of all the different choices. Um, this gave a, an older look to the cabinets. I didn't want that new look or that modern look. Um, but I hope that you enjoy and, and I hope that you've learned something about um, these decorative pieces and how simple something like this can be, yet it's totally the custom look. And of course, you can design it with any kind of an on layer corbel um, that you'd like um, and if you look in different places um, like I said Outwater Plastic has some and I'll list underneath some of the um, underneath the, the captions and, and information on the video um, some of the companies that I did get the onlays from and found that were my favorites um, 
thank you for watching and and if you enjoy it subscribe and uh like my videos and if you have any comments or suggestions please do so um and thank you for viewing